you would go ahead and do that now. Absolutely. Dear Lord, thank you for our time together today. Thank you for um, what everyone in the group is doing today. I know Tim's doing something important with his daughter for a fundraiser, and I know that's, that, that's all part of your work. So thank you for the, um, for the beacon of light and hope that he is being this morning and for us as well. I know Steve's going on a float trip with his family, but I also know that we never stop being your son and a beacon for others to, uh, to follow you. So thank you for our time this morning. Thank you for your, the wisdom you're going to partake on us. And thank you for our health and safety. Amen. 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 John Knott's going to join us now. I'm going to hit the admit button. He came in <coughs> during the prayer. So John will be here shortly. So uh, I'll just wait until he gets a little bit further into it before I... So John is with us. He uh, he's muted, but and his video's off. But I think by now he can hear us. So let me start. Uh, the section of James chapter one, verse nineteen through twenty-seven in my Bible is titled "Listening and Doing." And we were talking about listening, our ability to listen this morning uh, through the devices known as hearing aids, <laughs> and. Uh, we talked about the physical nature of some people that are older doing things that are probably best suited for people that are younger and uh, those needing perhaps AIDS. So, uh, you know, in the last 10 years or so, AIDS became uh, a word that was associated with a disease that was not very, uh, fun to have or, you know, respected to have or whatever. But uh, we talked about the, the aids of aiding people with hearing, aiding people with older people with some physical things. And, and Tim and his wanting to aid his daughter in, in her practice and what she's doing and uh, that we all have different things. So uh, listening and doing. Good morning, John. Good morning. So I will, I will go ahead and read, and then we'll have some discussion. Okay, uh, this is James, and it says, Understanding this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of some of the filth. Oh, wait a minute. It says all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then... God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. <laughs> Those are some pretty stern words, and I think uh, in our practice of Christianity, sometimes that's what is called for. Uh, oftentimes, it's what's called for to to patty cake around the uh, the subject of Christianity with the uh, well, you know, going to church and tithing and and being seen doing, you know, saying prayers or, or making uh, 
what do you call these zoom meeting videos or whatever you know those are all nice things to do but you know if if we're reading god's word daily and we're listening to the holy spirit tell us to do things you know the, the are we really doing those or are we finding excuses or you know uh Steve's dad found a reason, I'm sure, for a lot of years to not go get hearing aids, whether it was uh, the financial cost or the humility of having to admit he's lost something that he used to have, uh, or just, you know, you, you finally get to a point where you can uh, determine that what's best for you may cost you something in the way of a sacrifice of your time, your money, your effort, or whatever. It's just like we were talking about the diet thing, Steve. You were talking about how so many things, the thyroid issue or others, are, are directly related to what we eat and what we don't have in our system. There's there's things that we uh, can can make decisions about that will help us in the long run, but we at the time we really don't like the decision. I mean, get up and exercise? Come on. <laughs> There's got to be an easier well, way. Give me a shot for that or a pill or, or something, you know. Just, anyway, I'm supposed to be slow to speak, and that doesn't mean slowly speak for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to... Boy, I wish I would have written down where we left off. I'm going to start with question four and assume that, you know, we may have been further than that. But the question number four says, what does it take for me to hear something and then do what I hear? So there it is thrown out there. Um, anybody want to make a comment about what they feel like in their lives would be the thing that takes it from hearing to doing for them. I think for me, it takes understanding first of what's being asked, what I'm hearing, but then also acceptance <clears throat> that what I'm hearing fits with what is right. Um, and then the willingness to, maybe obedience, the willingness to then do what that is. So if it's just somebody speaking, uh, what I'm hearing may not in my life's filter be true or accurate, which then my actions will be very different than if it's something like reading this, knowing what it is, or hearing a word from someone that I know is uh, from God or from the Holy Spirit, um, it still takes understanding and, and then obedience uh, but uh, when something lines up with where i feel things are and i and i know we we talked about this we jumped ahead to james four and uh that was one of the things i really liked is it's not just oh ask whatever you want and you'll get it it's as long as it's aligned with god's will well then to me the obedience is a lot easier and faster um because again when you trust the source you don't have to necessarily do the due diligence yourself um, when you know the person is is right in what they're saying or of course if it's again from the holy spirit you know it's a direct line like that um but i think understanding and then obedience with a filter in there if we're talking about just hearing a another human being talk to make sure that it's lined up with the will of god or whatever god's asking me to do at that time so the thing in this verse that I notice is the word deceive, right? So a lot of times people talk themselves into something that's not true. This doesn't apply to me, or I'll do that later, or um, I'm not really that far off of the mark, or what they hear this is, this is me, myself, but it's everybody. What you hear isn't really true or it isn't really that important, you know? So there's a lot of ways we deceive ourselves, I think. So 
in a way, we give ourselves an excuse not to react to what we're hearing. You know, um, I think interesting is that we'll, or at least for me anyways, sometimes uh, hearing from God, uh, it should be the same when we hear from people that we trust, especially Christians, with the source, but it's so easy to just automatically uh, disregard what, what people say versus, you know, just, I don't know, just not wanting to, to hear what they say. You know, sometimes we'll, we'll go in with our own agenda and, and we have our ears totally blocked, you know, not listening when we should be. I'm not saying, you know, that they're going to be right, but we should be at least listening to what they're and especially if they're given insight into what to, uh, you know, on the word of God, you know, not, we can't automatically have a prejudgment that what they're going to say is, is wrong and just, just going with our own agenda. You no, know, that's a great point. Um, I think a lot of times I'm busy talking and not listening. And if somebody does say something, if they're not perfect, it's easy to discount everything they said, even though part of what they said is right. Yeah. I think sometimes the filter, unfortunately, is only allowing through things that align with what I already agree with to make me feel more right. Even if I need to hear something else, I need to be open to letting that in and actually contemplating how that relates to me. Um, so yeah, when you surround yourself with everyone that just thinks you're wonderful or just agrees with everything you're doing, it's easy to see everyone agrees we're doing it right. And it, you know, yet that, that lone voice of saying, well, maybe not. Um, sometimes we filter that out instead of be open to the only filter being the Holy Spirit and knowing what it feels like in here. We all know what that feels like in our gut, in our heart, in our, you know, in our core when things are perfectly right and when things are perfectly wrong. Um, you know, we've all even used that terminology. You know, this goes, to, I went against my gut instinct and it fell apart or I know in my gut this is wrong, but it looks right on paper or everyone else thinks we should do it or whatever it is. Um, so that's the more clear that filter is, and that's the only filter I use, which again, that's the challenge is, uh, that's when I know I'm getting the actual clear message. Yeah. I, the thing I, I would say is sometimes if you're, if you realize you're wrong, it takes a while to actually accept that God sees it and he'll forgive me because sometimes I get to where it doesn't make any difference if I do what's right because I'm so far out of bounds, it doesn't matter anyway. So actually deciding to turn around and do something different uh, is contingent on not only understanding it, not only accepting it, but, you know, believing God's going to help me with it too. You know, John... Uh, when he was started this his his conversation about how poor we really listen sometimes um, you know it it struck a chord with me because I know that um, we tend to and and I've, I watched myself after he said that and after it it, it triggered that remembrance in in me that that's so important to just totally dedicate yourself to listening to what the person is saying that while Steve, you spoke and Tom, you spoke after John spoke, I would hear one word that, that really resonated with my feeling about the subject. And then I would, my mind wanted to race over to what I was going to say about that one word and 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 it disconnected from my listening and i had to i had to kind of inside my head slap myself and say get sure. back and listen what are you doing over here trying to figure out what you're going to say you know <laughs> so you know i I'm, i hear the word filter 
And, oh, yeah, that's a really good word. Filter means you keep the bad stuff out. You let the good stuff come through. And, you know, and I, I'm over here, you know, pr- imagining what I'm going to say. And all of a sudden I realize I've stopped listening over here. Where, you know, I heard the word filter. And then all of a sudden I, I went over here. Yep. And there was some, you know, and I can't remember where it was, but each of you said something that really resonated with me. You were right on target. And, and then I jumped over there in my head and, you know, I had to, I had to bring myself back. So uh, uh-huh. listening is not something that comes real easy. And that's why I think James tells us that we need uh-huh. to, to do it better. And, right. and it helps us to um, recognize the fact that we've, we've got some, Challenges in that area. I don't know what happened. What, John? I don't know what happened. I lost. I'm going to text it out and try to get back in. You're oh. in. No, we You're can in. see you. We can, oh, hear I can't. you. we can hear you and see you. Oh, I can't see you guys at all. Oh, that's oh. sad. That could be a blessing. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I accidentally hit my mouse and then boom. Oh, uh, don't hit your go. mouse. What did your mouse ever do to you? Not a rat. <laughs> yeah, I got a, <laughs> it grew into I, a rat. <laughs> I need to go ahead and sign out here, guys. I, well, Steve, I'm glad I could you, join. You be but, safe out there on that river. What river are you going to? Well, we're going to the Merrimack River. It'll be in the middle of the state. So we're, you know, it's not as not as wide and deep as it is here in St. Louis up there. But yeah, Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Well, be, be safe. Uh, yes. Have you know, day. The, the, the only thing that uh, has ever been a problem for me in a, in a float trip, and, and a kayak won't be any different, is you round a curve and you see the big tree that fell down over the water in the path of where you cannot not go. The, the current is taking you there, and by golly, you're going to hit it. And when you do, it can flip your canoe. It can pin you under it. Yeah. And uh, so just be on the lookout, and, and uh, you know, hopefully you won't have any branches stick you in the ear or in the forehead. And this will be a, a dangerous, fun trip. <laughs> there you go. Well, well enjoy. Yeah. All right. Yeah, do enjoy, and uh, we'll be thinking about you the rest of the day. <laughs> We want to hear from you guys. Get back. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. John, did you figure out how to get us back on your screen? Yes, I did. Okay. Cool. Very good. Didn't have to leave us and come back. No. So as we as we were uh, talking about that question, it made me realize we did do that question last week. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next one. I think what I what I did was uh, either. I finished probably the first page, which the next question is what causes us to hear proper directions from God and then do something else? Um, Our flesh, isn't it? What did you say, John? Our flesh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Absolutely. I, it, it's kind of like it started out saying, or in the, in the verses there, it said, you look in the mirror and then you walk away and you forget what you look like. Uh, we, we tend to fill our mind's agenda of what we want to do or what we should be doing or with, with such a plethora of stuff. Even if we make a list we find ourselves in the middle of that list or in the beginning or somewhere in that list, getting off the list because we thought of some other things that we forgot to put on the list or things sure. that just pop, pop up in, in the middle of our doing our list. And then at the end of the day, we go back and we look at the list and we said, hmm, well, I didn't get all those things done, but I got some other things done, you know? Right. So uh, sometimes, you know, we hear God telling us to do stuff and it's maybe not, uh, what we want to do. So we allow those things that we want to do to prioritize themselves above the things that God wants us to do that we clearly heard from him to do. 
and we very much intend to do them. We just want to do them on our schedule, not his. Right. And, uh, you know, it's a delayed obedience is disobedience. So uh, that's, you know, one thing for me, and it, it goes far, whether it's from God or whether it's just from myself, my discipline in doing the things that should be done first, um, you know, don't, doesn't always line up with the way it, it would work out better for me if I did. Right. Okay. It says now number six, or let me go back and anybody else have any other comments about what causes us to hear proper directions from God and then do something else other than our flesh? Nope. Flesh is it, huh? Flesh is it. <laughs> How could verse 25 be the key to happiness or blessedness in the Christian's life? Verse 25 says, But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. It is very simple and straightforward, but as we've said, we get in our own way so many times that, you know, it's most of the things where God gives us instructions or Jesus gives us rules, they're very straightforward. We just muddy the waters or we let ourselves get in the way of um, whatever it is that it's asking, you know, um, we frequently continue the sentence with, I know what it says, but, you know, my situation's different, or I need to finish this first, or whatever this, whatever, whatever the scenario is. Um, it's so easy to do it, but it's also so easy not to do it. So I think it depends on, what, you know, one of the keys for me is what am I focusing on? Yeah. There's that verse that says, you know, we can do all things through Jesus Christ. Actually strengthens us, and sometimes we just uh, again won't let him help us, but you know, just we want to do it like Tom was saying. Yeah, I, I can, you know, since our Heavenly Father wants to bless us, and He's given us a perfect law that if we look at it and we do it and we remember what we heard about it you know and, and it says in his word that 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 is what is going to cause him or not, not that we have to manipulate god but there's a there's a promised reaction from god to our obedience and our remembering of what he gave us in his perfect law to us that the, the consequence of which is his blessing us. Now, to, to ask, how could it be the key <laughs> to our happiness and blessedness is the very fact that it's what releases God's blessings to us. Right. I mean, the, the word is true, and uh, yes and amen, and it says right here in his word that if we look carefully into the perfect law that sets us free and we do what it says and don't forget what we heard, that God will bless us for doing it. So the key is in the in the doing it, but the uh, uh, that that whole verse is the key to our happiness and right. and being blessed. And um, I'm sure it puts a smile on God's face as well. His His happiness is yes. uh, directly related to our obedience as as it relates to that. Okay, question seven, finally turn the page here. <laughs> so read verses 26 and 27. What is the three areas listed which are religious and God accepts as pure and faultless? Six and 
John, the question what, was. What chapter? Uh, what chapter did you say we're in? We're in James chapter 1. Well, I'm glad you said James something, Mike. Here we are talking away and forgot. I'm you said something, Mike. Here we are talking away and forgot. I, I, because you're not on the screen, I totally forgot to, to mention to you. Do you have something to add to our discussion here? Okay. I see where you're so we're at verse what now? Now we're at verses 26 and 27 of chapter 1 of okay. James. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. So if you got that open, Mike, why don't you read that for us so we can hear your voice some more? Which one? 26? 26 and 27. 27. It says, if anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. So the three areas that are religious and God accepts are what? So is that something that's, I don't know, you know, in, in our world, the way we are kind of separated from a small village in uh, Old Testament James time where you can readily see orphans all the time. It <laughs> makes it, you know, we, we think, well, how can I care for an orphan? Or how can I care for a widow in distress? Uh, I'd have to be exposed to them. Or I'd have to go out hunting for them in order to do either one of those two things. Um, there, uh, it, it is possible <laughs> and it is done by those who uh, take God's word seriously and they seek out opportunities to uh, take care of orphans or take care of widows. Uh, and, uh, but it seems to me that we probably uh, find it easier to at, at least have the opportunity to refuse to let the world corrupt us or, you know, that, that's something we can do. But Yeah. The first century orphans and widows had very little means of economic support. Unless a family member was willing to care for them, they were reduced to begging, selling themselves as slaves, or starving. By caring for these powerless people, the church put God's word into practice. When we give with no hope of receiving a return, we show what it means to serve others. And there's another part that goes on about this. To keep ourselves from being polluted by the world, we need to commit ourselves to Christ's ethical and moral system, not the world's. We are not to adapt to the world's value system, which is based on money, power, and blood. True faith means nothing if we are contaminated with such values. Those are good footnotes that your Bible has yeah. there. It, you know, one of the, one of the things that I heard <clears throat> when I was listening, pick up on that guys, I was listening. Um, <laughs> one of the, one of the things that when Mike was reading those footnotes was when we give, then, you know, we are, and, and I think that's important that we, when we give, we we're giving to an entity that has as part of its um, philosophy and its mandate and its, its rules or whatever you want to call them to take care of 
those that are orphans or those that are widows. Uh, I know that a lot of uh, churches and organizations uh, tend to uh, have a special place in their budgets and their giving from what they receive to those types of places. Uh, a single mother is almost in that same category of, yes. of a person who has a need that can't be met mm -hmm. physically by her own efforts of working or whatever. Now, some with the right education, the right jobs and what have you, some single mothers make good money and, and they have the ability to spend time with their kids. But for the most part, uh, a, a mother who has chosen to not abort her child because of the inconvenience that it might be for her, or who has tragically lost a husband that she had or whatever, then, then she's a widow, but um, she's still a single mother too. You know? right. <clears throat> so those, those people uh, do need resources. And although it may be beyond our reasonable uh, ability to reach out and, and um, help them. If we're giving to an organization that does so, we're doing it. Yeah, John, go ahead. Um, I was gonna make a confession is, is that I've kind of always, um, oh, but that last verse, you know, it, to me, it, since I haven't really had any dealings with orphans or whatever, I, I've kind of, I don't know, um, I always kind of assumed that that meant more so the poor versus just like orphans and widows, or, or maybe be inclusive with orphans, widows, and, and, and the poor included with that. And it didn't mean so much to me, but but you hit it on a very good point there with, with the single women almost being classified like with widows because, you know, since my daughter, you know, uh, got divorced, whatever, it's, it, it's this verse has brought more light to me in that subject. And, 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 and like you, you were saying, you know, uh, or as orphans and, and widows or whatever, to me that was always meant with the poor. And so it was easier for me to, to give in to, you know, uh, feed my people, you know, th those kind of things, or directly go and visiting orphans or go directly visiting widows and, you know, hands on per se. Yeah, I, I, that's why I liked what Mike read about his in his footnotes that the, the word give that he mentioned. It's, um, you know, if every Christian who really sought to be a true Christian went and visited orphans and widows, I mean, would there would there be enough orphans and widows to go around for all of us? Or would there be, a you know, you know, I, it, there are needs out there that you know, that we um, we were talking about the word aid before, and and we can be an aid in the lives of other people, uh, just like a hearing aid would help a person who is deficient in their ability to hear um, uh, would would be to that person. So. Um, I think it's it's always been a verse that I've it's kind of been one of my favorites to say what is real religion because people would ask me oh are you oh you're really religious and then, eh, do you know what being religious really is when they say that they they typically don't uh, because what they're seeing in me and what they're witnessing isn't what the Bible says religion is. Matter of fact, re religion, the way it was practiced even back in Jesus' day, was something that Jesus kind of said was, was worthless because it was praying in the square the longest, saying, you know, getting the best seat in the house and, and all this stuff. And, and he threw that notion out the door. He said, Attic, you know, you're just being religious, but you're not being pure and, and true. 
you know, sometimes I think it may be um, we have gotten lazy in aspects and, and that, uh, like for example, with Feeding My People, it, it easier to give to say organizations versus going out and doing it yourself. And yeah, you may not have particular gifts and, and mirrors and those kind of things, but still, like you're saying, you know, we are supposed to be doing these things. Well, yeah, George, I think something else that uh, in saying this, and uh, I can say that I've been uh, exposed to this, is finally the Lord spoke to me about this and said, you know, if you come up on these things, that's one thing. Or if you know an organization is doing that, that's another thing. But I think the Lord wants us to look for these situations and then execute them because I found out there were some people that are just like every one of us that are sitting there today, you know, having this pro program here. But there's other people that have been uh, not in this position before, and now they are, and they're embarrassed, and they're afraid. And, you know, when you come alongside them and just help with something, uh, it makes a big difference, and it gives them some of their confidence, and it shows them that somebody really does care because you, you stepped out of your normal lifestyle into theirs, and it was okay. You made sure they knew it was okay. Yeah. It wasn't something, it wasn't some gift, it wasn't some, you know, this was just coming alongside one another and helping each other because the Lord told us to love each other. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's so important because it addresses their psychological need in addition to their physical need. Because, like you said, they are, they've never been in this position before and they're, they're embarrassed right. by it. They're, they're, you know, they, they don't know where to go because they've never had this path in front of them before. And when we can go alongside of them and put our arm around them and snug them up, and you know, of course you can't do that with COVID, you can't touch them, but you gotta be six feet away, but you, you can- you Long can, arms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, there, there is a way. I mean, whether it's pick up the phone, uh, call them, uh, you know, go by their house or just talk to them and say, Hey, you know what there, but you know, there's, there's nothing that separates me from you because all of a sudden you can't go to work or your place of business shut down. And now you can't pay your bills and, and now you might lose your house or your car or whatever, you know, they're, they're, those are things that could happen to anybody. And you're no less of a person because they're happening to you. You're just, one that's more directly going through the test right now and it you know it, let, let's see what we can do together and let's 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 know that um uh, i'm not going to leave you stranded just because you know you can't afford gas to drive to where we can meet you know or whatever and let's let's just know that i still and will always love you and and it, you are uh, as important to me today as you were six months ago before all this happened. And uh, what can I do to help you? And don't be afraid to ask and don't be afraid to accept. You know, or... Exactly. So... I have a couple people that I've been dealing with lately in, in that situation. And then they try to make a, uh, make a choice. And in the midst of this, they still make another bad choice. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And when you still stick with them, I mean, it's very, uh, and without boss or must, you know, you just keep showing up, you keep showing up, you know, they're making mistakes, they know it, they're embarrassed, they don't want to talk about it, they don't want to get exposed, that you know that, because they used to be this way, this is the way people used to perceive them, and now they can't, they can't, they're not in that position anymore, you know, and it's, uh, it's been a real eye opener, but the thing that I found out that the Lord told me is, can't do that, Mike. Sitting down in the chair, you got to get up. You got to make it okay. You got to have a positive attitude about it, and you have to go and approach them. And sometimes they're still kind of rude about it because they're sore. You know, they're it hurts them. You know that they're in that position, and for you to uh, make sure that it's okay. But they learn something, and they get back in the swing of things. It. Uh, and then you just get back in the 
swing at some other different things that they didn't know about before because they have to now. Their job is, you know, not functional anymore. And, you know, then you have your family and the kids are used to getting ice cream and that and they can't afford the ice cream. So, you know, just different things, little things every day. It uh, eats these people up. I mean, it, it, it tears them up. And uh, when you can just be there and come alongside of them and not make it like a, a hoopla deal or look what I'm doing for you. You say, it's okay, you know, hey, the tables were trying to take care of me, whether the guy would or wouldn't. Just let them think that we at least help them. That's what the Lord does for us. Yeah. I think it's just really been, uh, really been an eye opener for me. Well, and, and your sharing that experience with us helps us to get our eyes open a little bit better today, too. So you it's guys have always been, always, uh, is, when you come there, there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> transparency things you can see that are going on, even in some of our guys' lives that have been different. But when all this stuff started, everybody knew it was going down fast. And it wasn't like where we were, where we going to come with this stuff. And so we all have those things. But, but you know, when you come like this and you got four or five people that you can lean on and they can lean on you, and they actually know it. You don't actually want to have to do that. But you know that, hey, if push in the shove, you can do it. And uh, that's what a lot of people don't have. So I say that's why the Lord wants us to pursue other people and let them know that, hey, we can be there with you. We might not be able to do everything, but we can do something. If nothing else, we can be with you through this. Yeah. And uh, I think that means a lot. Absolutely. That's good, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Tom, did you want to add something? Or? Um, I think the only thing to add is it's so easy to get caught up in our own little world um, and forget that there are people out there that have needs that we don't even think about. You know, it's kind of in the very beginning, uh, George and I were talking about just the simplicity of we, we want water, we go to our faucet, we turn on water and we can, we can drink that water. Um, you know, we forget what people don't have. Um, and the other thing that it's easy to forget that they don't have, and when I think of orphans, I think of this too, is people that don't even know or so far have lived a life in a certain way that they don't even know that God exists or, or how a relationship with God can exist. So I think of an orphan in a way like that also in the sense that, um, you know, they are without a father or without a parent, if you will. And it's not necessarily any choice of their own. They just may have grown up in a household where it just didn't even exist. And if they've had no one come into their life to show them, they are an orphan in a way and sometimes don't even realize that they just know something's missing. They don't know what it is. So we can then bring to them through our own life, through our own actions, but then also through communicating with them you know do they have a walk with christ do they even know that's a thing do they you know and again a lot of times people don't even realize um but by starting the conversation a lot of times you'll you'll hear well how do i do that or you know what what do i even need to say how do i pray and things like that so i think a lot of people are orphans in that arena as well and again if we're going to church and we're doing our group on Saturday and we've got our family, it's easy to forget that, uh, that there's a lot of people out there like that, that they're not necessarily consciously choosing it. That's just kind of been their, their arena and they're not aware of what's outside or they know there's something, but they have no idea how to plug into it. That's, that's good. That, I'll open my eyes up to thinking about, you know, that there's physical orphans, but then there's spiritual orphans as well. And uh, those spiritual orphans out there uh, are, I don't, just as important because they're, we're talking about eternity. If we don't introduce them to the fact that they are invited into a family with a father that wants and will 
do what is best for them forever and never harm them and never lie to them, never, you know, abuse them, that they are uh, as close as a decision on their part to, to being a part of that family. And, and that, you know, that's, that's an important thing to, to think about when I read these verses. Uh, and as I, as I do from here forward, I will always uh, intend to, I can't say always because I don't know what my, what I'll really do, but it's, it seems like it, you know, with the, the discussion about it, it may prop up in my mind, oh yeah, there are spiritual orphans as well as physical orphans. And, and uh, those are orphans that we need to care for as well. Um, well, the one other thing I think that what I've really experienced is uh, lately George, you muted yourself. I can't hear Mike. <laughs> I mean, they might be getting in a car and they don't know if the gas is going to be enough to get back and forth to work or not. Uh, and they can't afford the payment on the car. And then it just keeps going like dominoes, you know. And uh, sometimes you can just uh, do different things. They're kind of, uh, you don't have to put it in their face so much. You can just say, here, let's stop it here, man, get that and while you're there. For 20 bucks worth of gas in the car. Or, or, you know, small things like that that are really detrimental to them living the lifestyle that they were still having, you know, or just just getting by. And I have seen tremendous amounts of that uh, lately, and uh, it, it took a while, and I got, got my attention. And uh, I've watched you guys over the years different situations and it's a uh, it, it's tough and I say in our country which is a little bit of alarming is it's getting more and more and more people every day in that situation and much much worse already and so I think the Lord is getting our attention and wants us to take uh, take care of it whatever we can on our you know and what we the abilities that we have Yes, and, and Mike, you in, in your first comments, you mentioned something about the fact that uh, sometimes we have to go looking for those opportunities. Uh, the, the fact is, sometimes they're there, and uh, God puts them in front of us in a way that we really don't have to look. We just have to recognize and admit that that's the opportunity, and, and that, you know, it's... Right. It's when you tell your eyes to see what you're seeing and, and recognize that this is an opportunity that God has put in front of you to see what you're going to do with it. And, and you, if you admit that it didn't happen just by accident or by chance or whatever and it's not really meant for you to do you know reach over there and put ten dollars in that guy's gas tank or whatever um once you once you get past all that excuses that your your mind and your physical body and your wallet try to give you for not doing it uh you don't have to look real far it's not like uh, turning over rocks and looking, you know, back behind uh, the dirty stuff in the closet to find these opportunities. They're, they are out there. And um, I think to, you know, all the years that I have known Tim Rabbit and uh, seen him in action and seen what he, he is so quick to recognize opportunities and to be obedient to, to do for others what they might not be able to do for themselves. It's, it's almost embarrassing to me that I don't and haven't seen or taken the opportunities to do so, uh, partly because of my own 
selfishness and my lack of faith because I, I believe I need every penny that I've got for me. You know, it's the, the I worked hard for them. I earned them. They're mine. You know, I'll, I've got needs too. You know, we can make all kinds of excuses. Sure. Um, but, uh, I don't, I don't know that I personally have witnessed anybody more of a blessing to other people from a standpoint of financially and materially than Tim Rabbit. He just is, he's kind of out there in a league of his own with that and, and with his boldness to tell people how much they need Jesus. <laughs> right. Well, one of the things that, no. He said he agreed with that 100%. Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah. One of the things that that made me think of is um, <clears throat> I listen to Joy FM all the time when I'm in the car. Uh, we've supported them for as long as they've had their new signal. Uh, I think it's been over 10 years. Um, but at the first week of every month, they call it Give Joy and they encourage people to do what you were saying, George, you know, pay for someone's gas, pay for someone's groceries, pay for someone in the drive through the person behind you. Um, and it's the first week of every month. And I think it's a reminder. It, it reminds us not necessarily that people are in need, but it reminds us to be generous. And, and it's not that we always have to, I mean, it's obviously it's great to help someone who's truly in need and it could be, amazing to pay for their groceries and it could be you know for us it may not be that big of a deal financially but it could be huge for them in their choices of what they're having to choose to spend money on that particular week or month but it reminds us to also just be generous and not just with our money but that is a way that we could be generous of course our time of course we can help our neighbor shovel their driveway or rake their leaves because they're older or they're sick right now or whatever it is um, but it, it's a monthly reminder that we're supposed to be generous people. And, um, they even have, I think 30 ways of being that you can be generous. And a lot of times it doesn't even cost any money. Um, but it's that reminder that we're supposed to be a generous people. And that's one of the, you know, the, the older song that I remember growing up, they'll know we are Christians by our love. I believe that's one of the things that when you watch someone do that purely from a not expecting anything in return perspective, um, someone can look at that person and look at that action and go, that's a Christian in action. That's what they're, that's what a Christian does. They help people. They're generous people. Uh, again, doesn't have to be, lots of dollars it's it's just the thought and the action that goes with the thought and it can change somebody's life yeah that's good and and not only what we do that blesses that other person but in a way it's it's showing that person um it's like a seedling dropping off of a plant that all of a sudden another plant comes from it so the, the other person that's the recipient of that knows how relieving that was for them, that knows how blessed they felt. And then they are probably going to be more inclined to want to pass that on than had everybody shunned them and turned their back on them and mumbled under their breath about, oh, that person needs to get a job or, you know, whatever. Uh, if they see that there's love in the world that has been passed on to them, how much more likely it is for them to be able to show love to others themselves. Right. Well, and, and that's the cool thing is a lot of times someone will call the radio station and say, Oh my God, I want to thank the person who bought me whatever. But it's not unusual to have it be one of the, like a drive through person call in and go, you wouldn't believe it. 47 in people in a row until there was no one behind somebody paid for the person behind them just because they're like, Oh my God, that's so sweet. Not thank you. I just saved $7. They said, I want to pay it yeah. forward and pay the guy behind me. Yeah. So it, cool. it did exactly that. It made people go, I never even thought of that. Let's yeah. do that. And you know, and it, it just keeps going and going and going, which is awesome. So yeah, that that seed is huge. I think one of the big items that a lot of us 
was when I think I did too for a certain period of time. Now I'm more conscious of it than that. But I think the big thing is is when some one of those people find out that you really care about them. I mean, I mean, you genuinely had to step out of line, not noticeably at all, but you care about that person's well-being. You care about how down and out they are. You care about their relationship with the Lord, and you. And all you got to do, you know, you mention it, you put your arms around it, you do, you do something. But they understand that, hey, this is not a financial thing. This is not about, this is about somebody that came over here and helped me break my leaves. Or somebody that came alongside of them and just said, hey, it's all right. It's okay. So what? You don't have to be like that. Do this. Power of suggestion in it. But it's, uh, there's so much of it out there now. Uh, and you have to be able to give. I forget, you know, give and uh, take care of the moment. And uh, I think that's a, been a tremendous help to a lot of people. And I think uh, even our country, I think uh, we're trying to do that in some net, but in the next phase, you turn on the next channel and you got people burning stuff down. So it's not easy, but I think we have to, uh, you know, we have to take that to the Lord and understand how to do that and do one thing at a time. But it's, uh, I think sometimes people just need to know somebody else cares and they're out there with them, you know? Absolutely. I, I don't want to, um, I, I don't know that I'm diverting the subject, but it's it's come up on my heart. That little guy that we prayed for so often who is a, a, a friend of yours, Mike, How's how is he doing? still about the same. He's been working with me for like 20 years, you know, and uh, he still uh, he still struggles because they still guys are still doing the same things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when we have time alone, we talk about that. And uh, well, I don't understand why she's doing that, or she don't understand why he's doing that. Uh, it's different things. So I just try to I just try to stay consistent and positive. You know. Now, I'm talking about the youngster with the name that begins with a G. I, I... Yeah. That's he's, it. He's doing tremendous. Well, I think this thing here is, uh, he's, he's going to be, uh, he's six years old now. Wow. He'll be seven. And he's a little character, you know, when he comes over, you know, we wrestle around and everything and have fun that way, but he's, uh, and he's smart. He's really smart. And he's, uh, he's got a puppy now. So that put a whole new thing in his life. And so there's a lot of positive things. And uh, it's, uh, thanks for asking, but uh, he's doing pretty good. Yeah, he's. And he... I don't see too much, uh, you know, because of what where he came from, I don't see too much of any of that in his life anymore. And we just yeah. hope to pray that God uh, keeps her away from him, you know? Yeah. So he's you're. Dad there. He's yeah. Still, you know? Yeah, so you're you're able to and still very much involved in his life. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. that's good, and, and I know that's a reward for he and you both. And you know, I don't know how it would be appropriate, but uh, if you can let him know that that you have some grown adult male friends who think of him and pray for him and and care about him, um, because we do, and um, we we you know he's part of our family whether he knows it or not okay. yeah. you know, i think he's got uh his uh, lifestyle is a little bit different than like everybody else is different uh but he is uh he's doing real good he takes care of his mama pretty good and he uh you know acknowledges his dad good and he uh he's got a positive situation good and, uh, He's very, really, very smart, and he's coming along with it. So we just hope that uh, I don't see that he, you know, the genes he came from were like that. But so I contribute a lot of the Lord to uh, changing him and uh, working with him on a daily basis. The school things got him a little messed up and confused, which I would be too. Uh, but uh, we pray for him all the time, and he's uh, he's a little character. He's good. He's yeah. a good man. Uh, that's good. Good to hear. So, uh, sorry to divert. I guess uh, I just oh, I, I wanted to. If it was 
it was out there. It was nagging me, so I thought I'd better unnag, <laughs> unnag my nag. Bring it up. Okay. Well, uh, you want to do one more? Or you want to wrap it up for today? Uh, the next one was, <clears throat> in your opinion, what's the hardest one to follow? And we already talked <laughs> kind of about that, whether it's, yep. you know, taking care of orphans, taking care of widows, or uh, uh, refusing to let the world uh, corrupt Ooh, us. Yep. Um, each one of those can be the hardest to follow at, any, at, at certain times in our life. Um, yep. uh, next one is, what are we doing when we let our words run away from us and lose control of them? Uh, <clears throat> So if we if we let our words run away from us, and we lose control of our words, what is it that's going on then? What what are we doing? Just talking to hear ourselves talk most yeah. of the time. And we have to ask forgiveness for what we're taking too much control of. He's not involved in him. Yep. What did you say, Tom? I'm sorry. I just said we're talking to hear ourselves talk. There's no meaning behind the words if we're just letting it, you know. It, that's that's the one perspective I see from that question. The other one, which I don't think they meant, but I think it's important to say, is there are times that when you're speaking, whether it's in front of a big group to one person or whatever it might be, that you know it's God speaking through you, so it isn't your words necessarily consciously or, or even writing um and in that sense you kind of let things flow but i don't think that's what they're intending by the question um you know that's more of a letting go and letting god continue to talk through you and listening to what the spirit's asking you to say um but i believe they're talking more about just the meaningless words continuing to come out when there's no reason for them to yeah well even I, the, the last part of the question that says, and lose control of them, uh, I immediately go to when I'm angry, when I'm, you know, when I have an outburst of anger, sure. that's when I've demonstrated I've lost control of my words. And um, what I'm doing then is, is letting my flesh dictate how I'm going to behave rather than my spirit man out of love dictate how I'm going to behave. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I think w when I lose control of my words, which unfortunately is not as infrequent as I would like it to be, uh, it's it's generally in anger. Now, it can also be in my I hate to use the word ignorant, but uh, my ignorant attempt to be humorous to to get somebody to think i'm cutesy or special or whatever and, and not in anger but i've i've know that in in the spirit realm using those words in that context not in anger but in attempt to be funny is not appropriate got it it's crossed a line that if Jesus were standing right here next to me, I wouldn't cross. And I, and I, there was that a few years ago when my word was remember, it was remember that Jesus is always with you Got it. and that he is right there in you and with you in the spirit realm. And if you behave in such a manner that you wouldn't behave if you saw him there, then you have forgotten the opposite of remember. And, uh, you know, I think that sometimes when we, we lose control of our words or our actions and even our thoughts, we have forgotten whose we are, who loves us, how they've provided for us, and we've taken it upon ourselves to be our own little God that knows better than God. Yep. And uh, for those things, we could daily repent and ask for forgiveness. 
Absolutely. Okay, uh, we're gonna close after this one last question, which is what does being polluted by the world look like in today's culture? Wow. Well, I think the news, social media, but I think part of it is also just how much time we may spend in that. So there's a difference between being informed and hearing the same thing over and over and over again, uh, and then perpetuating that same thing over and over and over again. Um, I believe that's where a lot of the pollution comes from. Plus, it causes us or forces us to absolutely forget everything we just talked about of what it really is how we're supposed to be living our lives and things like that. Um, most of it's around not taking, not even focusing on solutions or responsibilities. It's just focusing on perpetuating something that doesn't fit our filter. Like we talked about earlier. It's perfect. That That's exactly what I was thinking of is the filter aspect. I've, I've got water filters and I've got oil filters and I've got air filters and over time, uh, they need to be replaced. Uh, they, they cannot continue to filter forever. Uh, they, they get full, they get clogged. They, they, you know, I've got this little robot that vacuums the house and you gotta, if you don't take that thing out and dust and empty the dustbin and clean its rollers, uh, where it's picked up hair and dust and dirt and all this kind of stuff, it will not be effective. Yep. It will, it'll literally turn itself off and say, until you fix me, I ain't going no further. Interesting. And um, that's, that's the way it is in our, our spiritual being. Uh, what it looks like in our culture is as we do not filter, we become polluted. And as we become polluted, we become ineffective as Christians. Yep. Uh, we, and to the point where, we might as well just turn ourselves off and put ourselves up in a closet because we ain't doing nothing. Because if we're that polluted, if we're that dirty, if we're that undistinguishable from the rest of the world, um, then you know we've we've lost all of our effectiveness as a child of God and and of perpetuating uh, the growth of His righteousness in the world. So. Sure, you know, uh, line I'd like to read here to you. It says about the polluted. It says to keep ourselves from being polluted by the world, we need to commit ourselves to Christ's ethical and moral system, not the world. We are not to adapt to the world's value system, which is based on money, power, and pleasure. True faith means nothing if we are contaminated with such values. Amen. And, and you put the emphasis on the key word there is commit. Yeah. It, it's, it's not a, uh, it's not a casual agreement. It's a commitment. And uh, there's uh, Ed Cole used to talk about the difference between a commitment and convenience. You know, if, if we only do the things that are Christianese out of convenience and we don't have a commitment to doing them, uh, then when the, when the going gets tough, you'll, you'll depart from being whatever it is that God's calling you to be. Yep. Uh, if you're committed to it, when the going gets tough, you just get that much tougher. You rely on the Lord. You, you put your faith into action and, uh, you step out in, in that faith and you trust the Lord and you obey regardless. You're committed. You're, this, is, this is a fight that you're not going to shoulder by yourself. You know who uh, your adversary is, but you also know who your companion is and who your leader is. And uh, the old game we used to play with kids, follow the leader. Right. You know, well, we have to choose the right leader. Very true. Well, I think this has been productive. I'm glad we uh, recorded it so that those of us who couldn't stay with us the whole time as John and Steve had to leave and as Tim and um, 
Michael and Patrick uh, couldn't join us. Uh, I've, I, you know, I've got a half a notion to go to Webster Groves this afternoon and see if they've got any barbecue for sale at the uh, Webster Groves Lions. But, you know, barbecue and this thing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they make soap, soap and water for. True. Uh, George, can I ask you, I just have one prayer request that you guys could uh, be with, and, and you guys are aware of this a little bit too. Is that okay? Yeah, yep. matter of fact, I was just going to ask you to close us in prayer, Mike. So uh, why don't we first ask Tom if he's got anything he would like to add for you to pray about, and then you go ahead, Tom. Um, I mean, other than the, the kids going back to college and keeping them safe and at college and enjoying the experience. Okay. All right, Michael, it's, it's all yours. Uh, I'd like to uh, just uh, for watch a few things again and again. Uh, I'd like to lift up uh, Tim Rabbit, uh, as we were talking about before. There's so many things to say, but I'm watching him at work. I'm watching how things are being handled there uh, without a lot of detail because I don't know a lot of it, but I see how he still handles it, still shows up, still does a good job. And it's like, uh, you know, you know, we've already talked about this amongst each other. They're, they're, they're trying to eventually get rid of him, I guess. And uh, I watch how he still hangs in there, does a great job. Uh, concerned about his health. Uh, I think he tries in moments, but he's, he struggles with that. And so I pray with him about that. And uh, and as, I also just can't thank him enough uh, for his example. He's did so many things. And uh, above all, though, it's just to uh, stand by and uh, watch somebody hurt him. Uh, just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And it's, I shouldn't be that way, but. Sometimes you just can't help it. You want to protect him and do whatever. He's doing a great job of that. But I just, uh, he's got a lot of stuff on his plate and he still keeps plugging. So I just want to thank uh, the Lord for him with that. And uh, so we'll just close the prayer now. Go ahead. So everybody can just kind of remember him, especially today and throughout this week. Okay. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this time. Thanks for these men to get together. What great knowledge, what great wisdom, Lord, comes through you telephones on Saturday morning and the word that we get from you. Uh, so we thank you very much for showing us that, Lord, and taking this time for all of us to be together and listen to each other's problems, listen to each other's directions. So while we're going through this week, we can lift each other up to the Lord and pray for each other. So, Lord, we ask you to... Uh, Wrap your arms around us, keep us safe, let us be good examples, and let us be uh, let us be an ambassador for you as we walk through this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we lift up uh, Tom's children as they uh, head off to college. Uh, we pray for the experience that uh, they need to shape their lives for the future as, uh, as they embark in this new chapter of their lives. And for little Gage, as he uh, deals with this, this issue that's, you know, in our school systems today because of the COVID-19 pandemic that has touched our world. Uh, we, we pray for him and, and Tom's children and all children and all young adults and people that are trying to pursue uh, avenues of education to uh, prepare them to um, earn money and to be productive members of society and uh, to have families and to, you know, just live out their lives in a way that uh, it, it appears at this time to be so filled with confusion and uncertainties that, uh, that uh, we, we just pray for them to, to know you and to uh, put their faith in you and uh, for them to, to rest in peace that surpasses all understanding uh, for, uh, with respect to their future. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dear Lord, I pray for our leaders. I help, I, I pray that they make decisions and live their lives according to your will. And um, 
help us to support those who support the life that you want for all of us. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, uh, we will see you or hear from you in uh, a week, hopefully. Uh, yep. And uh, God bless you all and have a great day. You too. Thanks, guys. Take care.